there are so many different ways that you can index a pandas data frame and this makes it very confusing. So we're gonna start with the fundamentals first and build up complexity so that by the end of this video, we can figure out which countries participate in the Olympics, but not FIFA and which countries participate in FIFA, but not the Olympics. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, I'm gonna assume that you already have Python and Pandas installed and I'm gonna open up a Python shell here on my computer and as always import Pandas as PD. Now I have these two CSV files on the desktop here that we're gonna be working out of. This is the one with the data about the countries, their ISO codes, their Olympic codes, their FIFA codes, all that good stuff. We also have this other one, states.csv, which has a list of the 50 states in the US and their population. So let's start out with the world.csv first. We're gonna read that data frame with pd.readcsv and we're gonna look at world.csv, which is on our desktop, and we're gonna specify the index column as name. Now, if you don't know how to read CSVs in pandas, check out the video that I did before this. Okay, so we have that data frame, and this is what it looks like. What are the different ways that we can access data in this data frame? Well, we can do it by the column name. Okay, so let's, let's show you the different ways you can do that. You can do df, with a dot syntax, let's get the FIFA code column. And that returns all the rows that, uh, all the rows and just the one column with the index for the FIFA column. Okay, so that is probably the least reusable way that you can access a column because what if a column has spaces or special characters in it, this dot syntax won't work. So I recommend not using that. A better way is with the square bracket syntax. So you can index into the data frame and specify the column that you're interested in. So we can do that with FIFA code, close brackets, and that'll give us back the same exact thing. Now that's, that's better than the first way, but the most reusable way to index in pandas is with lock. Okay, so we'll do df.lock, and we're gonna be super explicit here in the beginning, just so you understand how lock works. So we want all rows, which you can specify that with a colon, and then we only want the FIFA code column, okay? And if we execute that, we get back the same exact information. So what if we just wanted one row? Okay, well, we can specify which row we want. Let's say we want the row for India, and that's just gonna give us that specific cell that specific column for India, India's FIFA code, which is IND. So we can do a lot with that, right? We can get all the columns for India, which the non-explicit way to do that is with df.lock India, and that'll give us everything that we want. But the more explicit way, the most explicit way is with the colon syntax to get all columns. So anything before the comma, is specifying rows. Anything after the comma is specifying columns. So let's see what that gives us. Same thing as expected. Now, what if we just wanted a subset of the columns? Well, we can pass it a list of columns that we want. So let's say we want the FIFA code column and we want the International Olympic Committee code column. And that's gonna give us back what we want, just the FIFA code and just the IOC code for just that one row. Now, what if we wanted multiple rows? What if we wanted all rows uh, in alphabetical order between India and Italy? Well, we can do that too. So we can use this range operator. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but everything in order alphabetical between India and Italy. Something like that will give us back multiple rows now. India at the top, Italy at the bottom, and the FIFA code column, and the International Olympic code column. At this point, you know how to use pandas lock to kind of take your data set and a window around it and zoom into a specific part of it, but we're gonna take things a step further and actually filter the data by a specific condition. So let's use our states.csv file to demonstrate this. So we'll read that in with a header into a df variable. And it looks something like this. So we have the 50 states plus DC and Puerto Rico, each one of them having a name and a population. So 
Let's start off by getting all the states with a population less than 1 million. So we can do that by looking at the population column, okay? And we want all states with a population less than a million. So you can simply just say less than 1 million. And when we hit enter, we get back this Boolean series that says whether or not that condition was met. So for the state at this row and this row and this row, they do have a population less than uh, a 1 million. And these other ones up here don't have a population of less than 1 million. But that's not really that helpful. So let's use that as an index into our data frame. So what does that look like? Well, we would do something like df.lock. And then in between here, we would use what we just wrote on the Python shell. So that's we're getting the populations that are less than 1 million. So we could put that index into df.lock and we'll get all of those rows. So let's see what that looks like. And now we're just getting those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states with a population of less than 1 million. Now we can take this a step further and add multiple conditions. And we can do that with a syntax that looks something like this. So we'll still use df.lock. And in between the square brackets, we can specify multiple conditions. Let's say we want to get states with populations between 6 million and 8 million. Well, that's going to look something like this. So we have two conditions, the first condition here, the second condition here, and they are separated by the ampersand sign. So this one says populations greater than 6 million, and this one says populations less than 8 million. So multiple conditions, let's see what that returns. And it returns these lists of states with, it seems, yep, between 6 million and 8 million, Washington, Arizona, Massachusetts, Tennessee, Indiana, Missouri, and Maryland. In pandas, we don't just have to filter by a numeric value. There are other ways that we can filter data. So for example, let's say that we wanted to get a list of all the states that start with the letter C. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll do something like this, df, and we were looking at the state column because that's gonna have a list of all the states. And we want to look at the string value in all of those columns, and we just want the ones that starts with the letter C. So what does that give back to us? It's one of those yes, no, true, false um, indexes that we can pass into lock. So let's do that. We'll do, we'll take this and we'll do df.lock and our argument to that will be what we just typed. And that's gonna pass back California, Colorado, and Connecticut, all the states that start with the letter C. Next, let's say we have a list of states and we just want the rows associated with the states in that list. So how can we do that? Well, let's first define what our states are. We got Arkansas, Virginia, Tennessee, and Pennsylvania. And then in our data frame, we can look at the state column again, and we can use dot is in, and then pass it the list, which is called my states. So again, we're gonna get back one of those true false index columns, which we can then pass this one to df.lock. So let's go ahead and do that. And when we hit enter, we see only the rows associated with the states in our list. Now, we can easily negate that too, okay? So this is still what our states list look, looks like. So we have my states, but what if we wanted all states except those in my list? So we can simply take our initial query, which looked like this, where we had a whole bunch of falses and only a few trues, and we can prefix that with the tilde here, and that's gonna negate everything. So we have a whole bunch of trues and only a few falses. So again, we can pass that into df.lock, and when we execute that, we'll see all states except for the four states that we listed. And let me prove to you that that is actually the case without going through these each individually. We can execute that again and get the count for how many rows it's returning. And that is returning 48. And if you remember, our list is four in size. We started with 52, so that matches up. At this point, we have pretty much all the information that we need to do a more complex query and answer the initial question of 
wanting a list of countries that participate in the Olympics, but not FIFA and vice versa. So let's use the world.csv file that we're using in the beginning, read that into a data frame and remind ourselves what this looks like. So we have the International Olympic Committee code column here and the FIFA code column here. So we'll, what we want, let's first answer the question of countries in the Olympics, but not FIFA. So let's look at this column. We want countries that don't have NAN values here, which represents um, not being part of that um, grouping. And we want countries that do have a FIFA code column value. So let's do that. So we're gonna look at our data frame. We're gonna look at the IOC code column. And we wanna see columns that are not NAN. And we could do that with is NA and we'll just have to negate that. So again, we're looking for values in this column that are not NAN, and we can do that with this query here, which I did make a mistake because I forgot a quote here, but that will return one of those true false series, which we can use to index in with lock. But that's only one part of our condition. We can chain together multiple conditions with ampersand. So that's the first part. The other part is going to be opposite of this. So we want countries that have a FIFA code. Okay, so here's our first condition, here's our second condition. We just gotta combine those and index into our data frame with lock, so df.lock. Okay, we'll get our first condition, countries that have this and countries that are not in here. And that was a terrible way to explain that, so we want, again, countries that do not have an NAN value for Olympics and that do have an NAN value for FIFA. So let's see what kind of list that returns. And it returns this list of countries, which does seem pretty accurate. Now to get a list of countries that participate in FIFA, but not the Olympics, we can pretty much take our same query and move this negate sign from here to here. So this will give us countries that do not have a null value in the FIFA column and countries that do have a null value in the Olympic column. Let's see what that list looks like and there it is. If you like this video, I have a whole bunch of other Python and Pandas videos that you should check out next.